There aren't many articles of clothing that you can expect to see on both cuffed corduroy wearing latte sipping city kids and Hank Hill. The Bass Pro Shops hat has become a cultural signifier that nobody expected and it represents an industry with a huge influence over a particular demographic of people in America, men. So pack up your pickup with some sandwiches in the spirit of adventure because today we're going to Bass Pro Shop. Now, for those of you clicking on this video without context for what the hell is going on, the Bass Pro Shop hat is basically just merch for a store called Bass Pro Shop, or Outdoor World, or Cabela's if you're in Canada. This shop is where people go to buy guns, camouflage, and yes, fishing stuff. But that doesn't really explain why the hat has become a fashion item or why the company itself has grown into an icon of American culture. Because let's be honest, no one who wears this hat is going hunting this weekend. Now, believe it or not, the sudden popularity of this hat does not correlate to an overwhelming interest in outdoor sports and survivalist nerds. Although that is a new consumer market that these guys tap into that we're going to be talking about later. No, the hat today is ironically popular. It's a meme, but it has come to represent a very unironic and very real shift in culture in America. The Bass Pro Shops hat trend is not novel or surprising if you just zoom out a little bit. People are wearing old school brands with an ironic lack of swag from the early 2000s like Champion, Miss 60, Baby Fat, Juicy Couture, Uggs, and Crocs. We made a video about Crocs already. In fact, it's not even the only hat from this era. The Von Dutch hat is also popular amongst the Gen Z fashion folks nowadays. But anyway, it's back. The trucker hat, that is. And Gen Z style masters in all their wisdom have decided that the Bass Pro Shops hat would become relevant for some reason. But its insane popularity and significance across different demographics is not something that could have been planned. And that's what makes this phenomenon different. Hey team, so I know that we are normally telling you about stuff that you should not buy, but in this case, we're actually telling you to buy our stuff. We are stoked to announce that we are going to be releasing a limited batch of stickers. So we have five stickers in the pack. The first two are Future Proof branded stickers. We have the Stop Buying Shit You Don't Need sticker, a Starbucks ripoff one that I'm really proud of, and the fake Costco card, which is a classic. We designed all of these in-house and we thought it was just a really cool way for us to make something that you could buy to help support this channel. And these stickers are kind of the best option. It's a cool token that shows that you support what we do and that you like our content, but it's also a low impact product that's locally made. The sticker packs are going to be selling for $25 USD and are going to be exclusively available for those who are living in Canada and the United States. We may expand shipping later, but for right now, we're just trying to keep it simple. If you are supporting us on Patreon, you'll be getting an additional $5 off of any sticker packs. Plus, if you join us over there, you will be getting access to exclusive content as well. We release a monthly podcast over on Patreon, and it's another great way to support what we do. So if you want to support what we do, check them out through the link down in the description. Thank you so much. Now let's get back into the video. Now you might be familiar with something called LeVar's Law of Fashion, which is basically the idea that wearing stuff that used to be cool before it's cool again makes it cool. Cyclical trends happen all the time, and we kind of know this, right? And of course, today, in 2024, we have the influencers doing their thing to help spread the word about the whole Bass Pro Shop trend that it is. But as far as we can tell, this trend has kind of just grown organically. Bass Pro Shops did not plan out a social blitz for this thing. There was no Mad Men vision where rednecks and English lit majors are wearing the same hats in perfect harmony. It just sort of happened. But that would be a pretty short Future Proof video. So here are some surface level reasons why it happened and we're gonna get into the deeper stuff later. At $6.99, this hat is a cheap door buster because it's free advertising for the brand and you know what, everybody loves a good deal. But the unique thing that this weird hat has going for it is its popularities on both sides of the political spectrum. Gen Z loves this hat for the meme. The Bass Pro logo is iconic, 
the design is so retro and ugly that it's actually great. So you have these youthful city pilled concrete surfers who have never even been near a fishing rod in their lives wearing the hat as commentary on that fact. Then you have frat bros who love this hat without knowing anything about their local trout either, but they're wearing it in sort of an ironic manly way. And perhaps the best encapsulation of how the hat sort of pokes fun at the manly stereotype is the party hat thing. This is how you can make a cheap $5 party hat. What was just kind of a funny joke on a logo has spawned a whole world of merch for the adaptation of this iconic brand. But the thing is, it's not just hipsters and hype beasts that are wearing this hat now. It's trickled down to the normies, and we have just a whole bunch of regular bros that are wearing this hat. To the point, in fact, that it's become a bit of a red flag for young women who are in the dating pool. What's your opinion on the Bass uh, Pro Shot hat trend? Um, it's the immediate red flag of a boy, so. Sorry about that. And then, way on the outside of all of this are just legit fishermen and hunters who are wearing the hat because they probably got it for free with an order of ammunition that they bought at Bass Pro Shops one day. So you have a lot of different people wearing these hats for a lot of different reasons. Bass Pro hats have become an identity marker. It's like their whole deal. And some are becoming pretty mad about this whole trendy thing. So why are people getting mad? What is the problem? The thing about Bass Pro is that a lot of rural people wear it as redneck athleisure. And if you don't know what I mean by that, let me draw a comparison. You wear Lululemon to look like an upper middle class healthy person. You wear Arcteryx to look like an upper middle class outdoorsy person. And you wear Bass Pro Shops equipment to look like an outdoorsy woodsy person who knows how to skin an elk or something. The success of Bass Pro Shops across the country shows that rednecks have a subculture of their own and one day it was just bound to go mainstream. For every leftist goth girl wearing these things ironically, there are two random Midwesterners or Southern bros wearing these hats aspirationally, hoping to telegraph their manly outdoorsiness in the same way that some folks will wear yoga clothes or running gears in the hopes that it'll make them look like they're running marathons. So the hat symbolizes the store and the store represents the culture. Now, we've got to talk about how this culture was created by the founder of Bass Pro Shops, Johnny Morris. It is really hard to separate the shop from the man because this guy is kind of a legend. He started the brand all on his own and has been the CEO of the company since 1972. Johnny is by all accounts deeply legit in his love for bass fishing. He did it professionally for five years after all, and he started the company because he didn't have access to the kind of fishing equipment that he wanted when he needed to reel in the big ones. But Johnny lived in America, God damn it. So what did he do? He did what any entrepreneurial red-blooded American would. He got himself a truck and a trailer, and he traveled here and there, far and wide, using his practiced iron fisherman savvy to buy the best gear that he could find. Then Johnny traveled back home with his bass fisher's bounty and set up a shop in the back of his dad's liquor store. He then set up mailing lists to sell his products far and wide. And he used his keen business savvy to take what it would have just been a tax shelf in a liquor store to a multi-billion dollar empire. And what I find really fascinating about this story is just how similar it is to the Yvonne Chouinard Patagonia story. Beyond their physical resemblance, which is kind of uncanny, both are men interested in the outdoors who wanted better equipment, in his case, climbing gear, who set about establishing their own businesses to make the outdoors more enjoyable, who then inadvertently built multi-billion dollar corporations in the same niche. Now this rags to riches story was approved by the company's CEO and publicity team, and it is kind of what the whole brand is based on. And the thing is, according to what seems like a relatively comprehensive study, Bass Pros have really good reputations with their consumers. People love going there. But this is kind of where the similarities between Bass Pro and Patagonia stop. If Patagonia is supposedly all about saving the planet, Bass Pro is all about the money. 
They got really good at not just creating their own proprietary brands of fishing gear, boats, ATVs, and clothes, and pretty much whatever else you can think of. They also make a vast ton of money on a bunch of subsidiary companies, which include things like hotels, resorts, a proprietary line of boats, a goddamn music festival, resorts. Did I mention resorts? The list goes on forever. The Federal Trade Commission even blocked the parent company of Bass Pro Shops from acquiring another sporting goods chain on the grounds that this would basically make them the only gig in town for like the entire USA. But it wasn't just a nifty story and some good business moves that ensured that this brand was successful. Bass Pro Shops has somehow become the most American store on the planet. See, Bass Pro Shops is like if the Willy Wonka chocolate factory was a bait and tackle shop. Every single store that you go into has this over the top woodsy aesthetic with the trees and the fake rock cliffs and an aquarium and all the dead bears and wildlife that you could want for your decorative enjoyment. The pinnacle of this is of course what has come to be known as the redneck mecca in Memphis, which is literally like an outdoor amusement park terraformed inside of a formerly abandoned pyramid. Don't worry, we're gonna get to that in a little bit. And the thing is, this Disneyland shopping experience sells stuff like you wouldn't believe. While most zoos and science centers cost money to go to, Bass Pro is free. It costs no money for the average city dweller to wander in and soak up the nature adjacent vibes. So picking up a Bass Pro Shop hat for $6.99 while you're there is a pretty easy sell. This whole thing is like an immersive advertisement for who you could be and where you could go if you just buy enough of their stuff. It's like if the Natural History Museum sold whips and leather jackets and fedoras and taught customers how to punch Nazis and shout things like, That belongs in a museum! The Bass Pro Shop environment is where you get to be that guy. He's not the guy. And in a time where what it means to be a man is less defined, and with an apocalypse looming on the horizon, Bass Pro offers an easy solution for dudes. Go back to the woods and provide for yourself, aided by Bass Pro's many proprietary brands, of course. Now, we can debate the social aspects of what this brand represents, but what you can't really argue is its influence. And that influence is manifested in the pyramid. Now, if you were pitching a movie idea about how capitalism is the new religion in an age where traditional religions are on the decline, you'd get laughed out of any writer's room for dreaming up something as hacky as a giant glittering pyramid with a Technicolor fish logo on the side. But the pyramid is kind of like the giant temple or church in this metaphor. This place has everything. Whether you're gonna be doing water sports, hunting, camping, fishing, this is kind of like the Mecca. As we mentioned before, commenters online jokingly call it Red Necca or Red Neck Mecca in reference to the holiest place in the Muslim faith where all those who are physically and financially able must travel to once in their lives. It is a truly beautiful expression of faith and tradition in that context, but something that the real Mecca luckily never has to deal with that Red Necca and other smaller Bass Pro Shops do have to deal with is devotees getting buck naked and cannonballing into the fish tank. Now, some sources say that this is the seventh largest pyramid in the world, but those sources seem to hinge mostly on a single listicle made by a guy named Steve, and most other online rankings put it somewhere in the top 10. So it is still just objectively impressive. It claims to have the world's tallest freestanding elevator. It's got an archery range, a laser arcade, a bowling alley, an aquarium, three restaurants, a luxury hotel, and alligators. And look, I know that we're joking about like the redneck mecca thing, but there are actually a whole bunch of videos of dudes filming their overnights at the Pyramid Hotel or just filming tours of themselves in the store. And they're like really excited about the whole thing. So as we've said a bunch of times in this video already, the Bass Pro Shop brand is a symbol for a bunch of different people for a bunch of different reasons. And that symbol is the tough and capable man stereotype. And I feel like this TikTok posted by the official Bass Pro Shops account captures this perfectly. Choose your dad, grill dad, boat dad, hunting dad, hiking dad, fishing dad. 
this like choose your character idea is like exactly what Bass Pro Shops is all about. There, you can go and make your dude identity and find all the stuff that you need to fulfill it. When we were sifting through videos, trying to figure out what the deal was with this whole thing, we started noticing a trend of women online posting weirdly patronizing videos like cheat day for hubby or alternately dudes posting videos about going to Bass Pro with their bored wives and spending all the money that they weren't allowed to spend. I'm proud of you, you know that. I hope you do. And this whole dude space versus chick space is on purpose because Bass Pro Shops isn't the first one to do it. Places like Sephora are designed to make you feel more feminine. You wander the brightly lit aisles and gorgeous people with immaculate hair and makeup come up to you and offer to teach you about how to use their product and also subliminally teach you how to move in the world as a beautiful and modern woman. And Bass Pro Shops does the same thing for guys, but with camo and fishing equipment. Go to a Bass Pro Shop and guarantee there's gonna be at least one other dude there willing to talk as much or as little as you want while you both look at rod and reel sales. It's like a safe space for a certain kind of male stereotype. This brand is for an increasingly divided America to feel surrounded by foundational American patriotic mythology, freedom, hunting, fishing, and the absolute fairy tale of a billionaire who came from nothing. And you can be a part of the whole thing if you just buy a $7 hat. If you like this video and you wanna see more of it, make sure to like it and subscribe and we'll see you every single week for another upload.